Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mirror Neuron which means watch and learn and today we are going to solve a project using different machine learning algorithm and that would be on the telecom churn data which means we are going to predict which customers are going to switch their mobile or telephone carrier. So for example in countries in the US uh, we have different uh, telecom providers right such as um, Verizon or T-Mobile or AT&T and compared to India we have BSNL, IDEA, Vodafone etc. So a particular customer say is with a X mobile carrier then what is the chance that that person will switch to another you know, service provider. So let's look into the Python code and how to solve such problems. All right, so let's jump quickly into the Python code. So you can find the data set in the URL that I provided in the second line, and you can follow along with the code that we have written. This is in Python. So we have two data sets, one for the training and one for the test. So in the train data set will be used for finding the model parameters and we'll try to build a model using the training data set. And we'll also do our exploratory data analysis using the training data set. And uh, then the test data set will be used to validate our uh, discovery and the findings and also to make sure that our model uh, is generalized. Okay, so using the train.shape method and the test.shape method, we can quickly see that there are 3,333 rows and 21 columns for the training data set and there are almost 50% of that data is for the testing and same number of columns. Okay. Now before we write any code, what we are going to discuss is the different business problem that can answer uh, from this data set and here I have mentioned only three of those but in the real world there could be many more such questions that might arise during our analysis and, of, and we hope that our data would be able to answer that for us. So the first question that we have is which customer has the highest probability to switch to another telecom provider also known as churn that means one customer is switching from one provider to another provider that means that's a loss of business and the analogy can be used for other uh, com in a pro uh, industry as well say for example in the e-commerce uh, say there are different clothing brand and you are a loyal customer of one of the clothing brand and you, you know, switch to another clothing brand and so on uh, it could be also the e-commerce platform itself so it might be you're you know working with say Amazon but then you switch to Flipkart and so on so these are the different examples of churn uh, the second question is not only that we are interested in knowing you know that people are churning or what is the probability that the people will churn but then we also need to know what is the reason you know that is of more importance that you know we need to find the reasons why people are switching or moving out of the business because that will help us fix the issues and make sure that we you know we provide more satisfaction to the customers and you know we are able to retain them the third question could be you know say we have built a model but then how sure are we that the model is perfect or the, the predictions are actually good or close to reality right so can we rely on this kind of predictive analytics and so on so we also need to make sure that our model is not just any random guess rather is actually talking the reality right so we need to find that as well so these are there are, these are the few simple questions that has come up but then as i told you in the real world industry the th questions could be more complex and we might want to do more exploratory data analysis do more research on our problem statement and make sure we have relevant data for that as well so the real world is slightly different and of course you'll be supported by the subject matter experts the business analysts and the so on so many people but because we are keeping our focus only on understanding how to build a machine learning model so we are keeping the problem relatively simpler but it will give you a real feel about the actual projects that we do in the industry okay so now let's look into more details about the data so we can use the dot info method to quickly see you know what are my field names and what kind of data does they hold and whether there are any um, missing or null values or not uh, as i told you this data is more or less cleaned so you know there are 
few things that have been already taken care of because for the time being this is a simple project for the new beginners and we don't want to confuse them much so that's why we took care of few things ahead of time but as you keep staying you know if you keep staying with our channel you'll come across all those projects where we take actually the messy data we clean them we prepare them and then we do machine learning on top of it in this project some of those activities were taken care of ahead of time okay so you can see that just by using the train dot is null dot sum function uh, in both the training data frame and the test data frame we see that there are no null records thankfully a good thing uh, okay so now that these two things are taken care of uh, let's use the dot head method to quickly get a glimpse of the actual data set that we have so we can see that our data set already have a lot of categorical values and if i scroll to the right you can see there are many columns where there are uh, continuous value or you can say uh, numerical value as well or the floating numbers here okay so it contains both categorical and numerical so whenever you see that it's a mix of both categorical and numerical keep in mind that we have to convert this categorical feature of course we'll see which of the features are important uh, but then we have to make sure these categorical features are converted into a numerical feature because our machine learning algorithm or most of the machine learning algorithms uh, you know ex expects to have numerical features not categorical features so for that we can use label encoding or dummy values we'll talk about this as we progress in the project but for the time being keep in mind that uh, the numerical features will typically normalize so that they are within the range of 0 to 1 because there are different scales uh, Machine learning algorithm again expects those to be of the same scale so that it can converge faster So that means it can find the solution quicker uh, if you have different scales then it will take a longer time and If we have categorical then you have to convert them into numerical features likewise so same thing goes for both train and test so you can see that uh, both in the training data set and the test data set we have a column called unnamed the very first one and we don't want that data to be there because it's a redundant serial number which we don't need so we can drop it so you can see that in line 42 uh, we are dropping that same column from both train and test data frame and keep in mind that we are using x is equal to 1 so that it drops a column otherwise it will be confused and looking for a label or in the record so which we don't have so it's a column name that we want to drop and in place is equal to true make sure that it overrides the uh, data frame and in, in the same place instead of creating a different copy of the data frame so again if we use the train dot head method and the test dot head method you can see that the first column is dropped well very good for us all right so let's do some more exploratory data analysis and the the typical thing that we would do is you know we have to keep an account of how many categorical features we have so that way we know what processing we have to do for the categorical features and if we have a different set of numerical features we know a standard set of things that we would do with numerical features so just by using the select d types method we can identify uh, if we exclude the number the boolean and the float the remaining is the object type basically so the object types basically are the category type uh, data set and we can see that there are one two three four five there are five columns including the output variable or the target variable churn so they are categorical and if we exclude the boolean and the object then in that case we get the numerical feature so kind of there are like 15 features so total we have 21 columns right one was the unnamed which we dropped so remaining there were 20 so 5 is categorical so 15 is the numerical features now because they are numerical features and we can see that in our data set we have the day minutes we can say also see the day charge so we know that from our real world experience that the more time that we talk over the phone the more amount of bill we pay right so that means that uh, there are charges by minute right of course nowadays many things have changed we are paying uh, a monthly rental rather than you know per day basis uh, amount but then this data is a little bit old so we still have that minutes per charge so what we can expect is the more we talk the more charges we are going to pay so we hope there will be a high correlation between the total day minutes and the total day charge similarly uh, we will have total evening minutes uh, compared to total evening charge will be again a highly correlated variable so let's see uh, if we can plot that 
So what we did, first we calculated the correlation matrix, which is the do, using the dot C O R R method, and we took the absolute value of it because here we are interested in the correlation. We are not much worried about the positive or negative correlation at this point of time, and also. Because it just gives you correlation, it's very hard to visualize it. So what we did, we used a rearrangement of all these values, and we tried to plot them in two columns so that we can see the correlation of one variable versus the all other variables. So that way you can see that, and we have also sorted them. So you can see the first four columns. As I was telling you, the more minutes that we talk, the more charge we are going to pay. It's very obvious, and it has a very standard rule. So for example, if you talk for one minute. You have to pay one rupees in Indian currency, or similarly in the U.S., you can say if you talk for one minute, you are going to pay one cent. So that means it's already correlated, right? Your charge is nothing but the number of minutes multiplied by a certain amount, right? So that's a fixed relationship. So we expect to have a correlation ship of one or very close to one. So the first four columns pertaining to the charge is like a redundant data for our for our case. So what we can do is. In that those scenarios, we can drop those four columns because from both the training and the test, because it's obvious that these two relationships are not giving us any more new information, right? It's just a relationship, so we can drop them. Okay, so once we do that cleanup, so now we have we had 15 numerical columns. Now we have dropped four of them, so we are left with 11 columns. Okay, now I also want to see what how my data is distributed. Why it is done? Because I want to see: Are they normally distributed? Do they have a bell-shaped curve when I plot their distribution, or are they skewed? Are they skewed to the left or to the right? Because that will give me an understanding that my data is not properly sampled. Which means that if my data starts with a bias, right? If I have a data of one population higher than the other one, my machine learning will tend to be biased as well. So we have to make sure our data is normally distributed. That means it should look like a bell curve. So if I use the train dot hist method, as you can see in the very top line 76, it will plot all my numerical data's distribution. So you can see here, I have 11 plots because I have 11 numerical futures. Uh, so you can see I have the account underscore length, which looks like a normally distributed, but my number of customer service calls, that means the number of calls that people make to the customer care, you know, you can see it's a bit right skewed, that means the density is more towards the left, which shows that only few calls has been made to the uh, customer care. You can see the voicemail messages, again, very limited, very less voicemail messages because most of the them are zero. And some of them are in the 20s and 30s and so on. Today, to total day calls again looks more, more or less normally distributed. Total day minutes again looks normally distributed and so on. So this gives us a quick idea that there are few features which is the number of voicemail messages and the customer service calls. We need to look deeper into those kind of data because they seem to be a bit biased or imbalanced. Okay. Now, that was simple, very easy to plot the numerical data using the histogram function, but the categorical doesn't, uh, data doesn't give us such you know, uh, luxury to plot very easily. So what we are going to use is we are going to use a combination of Seaborn's facet grid and the pandas melt function. So first we'll create the, uh, using the melt function, we'll create all the data set necessary for plotting and then using the facet grid, we can plot all the categorical variables and their counts. So you can see that the first one is my area code. So looks like area code 4115 has more data points compared to other one. Again, bit biased. Also people who have churned versus people who have not churned. So that means our data set for the target variable is again biased. So that means we have more uh, people who have not churned. So that means my uh, particular interest, which is churn is equal to yes, has a less data set. Again, we have to see when we use this for training we have to make sure our data sets are equally distributed the international plan you can see majority of the customers did not have an international plan again the sample data is biased whereas my data set is equally distributed for all the states although the graph is too small but what i have plotted here for the variable equal to state is all the states in the united uh, states of america so you can see the data is more or less equal for all the states so technically 
this data is not providing me much information so i might drop this column okay again uh, by voice uh, mail plan you can see majority of the people did not use their voice mail plan so maximum number of customers have no in their data set again this data looks somewhat biased so all this imbalance needs to be taken care of before we you know can feed this into our machine learning algorithm otherwise our machine learning algorithm will also tend to give us a bias prediction which might be totally inaccurate and harmful for the business decisions okay so now from this data visualization we can take two steps first is normalize the numerical data third is of course convert the categorical data into numerical data but then we also have to make sure that the features which are skewed and have imbalanced data set we need to handle those as well let's catch this on the our next video so kindly practice and make sure you have covered and understood this much and if you have any questions or comments please post it in our description sections in the comment section we'll be more than happy to and reward so thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel youtube.com slash c slash mirror neuron have a nice day